Think about the food that you see in the American grocery store. Think about how much that food has been modified, processed, the additives and things that have been taken away in the steps that it takes from going from a real food, something that is grown in nature on a farm, and the food that you find on that grocery store shelf. Now, what we're talking about here are ultra processed foods. And you may have heard that ultra processed foods are a risk for health because it has been linked to the consumption of ultra processed foods has been linked to higher risk for developing everything from heart disease to diabetes to cancer to shorter lifespan. But what are these ultra processed foods doing to our brains? Is it the case that as we consume more of these uh, altered foods, things that we again, wouldn't find anywhere near a farm that our brains are suffering? In this video, we're going to discuss this research. We're going to talk about how ultra-processed food consumption is a major risk factor for a host of brain-related issues. That includes everything from worse mental health to risk for dementia to risk for stroke. So in this video, we will define ultra-processed foods. We will talk about the associations between ultra-processed food consumption and various brain-related conditions. We will talk about some of the mechanisms. And then most importantly, we'll talk about what you can do today to enhance your brain function right now and in the future by removing ultra processed foods from your diet, both in terms of decreasing your exposure and in terms of if you're, re if you're ready for this, cutting out certain ultra processed foods from your diet. I'm Dr. Austin Perlmutter. On this channel, you're always going to be hearing lots of content around how to optimize and protect your brain. If you're not subscribed already, please subscribe. It helps me and it helps you to get all this content in real time. Now, with this said, before we jump into the video, I will say general disclaimer, this is for educational purposes only, and it is not intended as medical advice. So as background around ultra processed foods, I think the most important starting point is to understand that we have redefined what food actually means. By and large, food is now ultra processed junk. It is so different from what we would have called food just a couple generations ago. To put this into the context of how significant this change is, right now in the United States, there's between 60 and 70% of our calories that come from ultra processed foods. And in children, in teenagers, that number increases to around 70% of our calories coming from these ultra processed foods. What are ultra processed foods? Well, these are things, you wanna think about things that you couldn't make in your kitchen that are nowhere near what you would find on a farm. And again, these are things that have been linked to a host of different uh, medical conditions, basically everything that is linked to metabolic dysfunction, as well as the top contributors to death and disability around the world. But we really want to talk in this video about how ultra processed foods are impacting brain function in particular. Let's do a little bit of a uh, better job of defining what an ultra processed food is. Typically, we think of ultra processed foods as industrially manufactured products that are made from substances that have something to do with real foods or things that are synthesized in the laboratory. These are foods that typically are very low in actual food content. They have been custom designed to maximize palatability, taste, convenience, uh, and shelf life. Some of the best examples of the foods that would be defined as ultra processed foods would be packaged snack foods, cereals, uh, candies, chips, breads, basically anything that you find in the middle aisles of your grocery store. Uh, so let's go into this in a little bit more detail. Here are some of the key characteristics of ultra processed foods. One, ultra processed foods tend to be rich in additives, things like preservatives and sweeteners, colorings, flavorings, things that um, basically are added to the food to enhance shelf stability, to enhance flavor, to make sure that this food is going to do well in a grocery store, fly off the shelf and get you coming back for more. Another characteristic is that ultra processed foods tend to be highly refined, both in terms of the overall food and in terms of the ingredients. Ultra processed foods also tend to be very low in key nutrients. So while they can be fortified with minerals and vitamins, they tend to, on the whole, be high in calories, high in sugars, high in unhealthy fats and other elements, while being very low in key vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients, uh, especially healthy fats, healthy proteins, healthy fibers that could otherwise be found in real foods.
Ultra processed foods are also highly palatable. And I've mentioned this a few times, but they are designed to get people to not only eat them once, but to continue to come back and eat them time and time again, and to even eat them when they're not that hungry. They also tend to be very low in whole food content. So by and large, ultra processed foods don't contain really big components that come directly from real minimally processed foods. How do ultra processed foods increase risk for brain conditions? In this case, let's talk about dementia. Dementia is a huge issue. You probably know somebody or at least know of people who have experienced dementia either themselves or in their families. It is a major, major concern, not only because rates of dementia have been increasing in terms of the total number of people who have dementia right now. It's around 50 to 60 million people around the world. That is a number that is expected to triple in the coming decades, but because right now there are no good therapeutics for dementia. The most common cause of dementia is Alzheimer's dementia, and that's about 70 to potentially 80% of total cases of dementia. Dementia has many potential uh, etiologies, but one of the correlations that we're seeing now rise to the top is the understanding that diet influences risk for dementia. So when we look at specific subtypes of diet, we need to look at whether ultra-processed foods are correlated with risk for dementia. There was a study that was just published in the Journal of Neurology in the year 2024. They looked at 870,000 people, around 870,000 people, and they found that when they compared consumption of ultra-processed food and risk for dementia, that the people who ate the most ultra-processed foods were at a 44% increased risk of developing dementia. And this is in following a paper that was published in the journal of neurology, a very well-respected journal in the topic of brain health that found that if you replace 10% of ultra processed foods with minimally processed foods, there was a 19% drop in risk for developing dementia. As it relates to mental health disorders, again, a major, major problem around the world in the United States. We see that around the world, there are around 300 million people with depression, a slightly higher number of people with anxiety disorders. How does it relate to diet? In a 2022 systematic review published in the journal Nutrients, researchers found that higher consumption of ultra-processed foods was correlated with an almost 50% increased risk for both depression and for anxiety. Now, I will say as a caveat to this, that additional research, which was published in 2022, looked at both depression and anxiety, found the correlation for depression, but not as much for anxiety. And why that might be relevant is because when we think about the pathways that ultra processed food acts upon within our brains, one of the best characterized pathways relates to the immune system. In particular, we now understand that inflammation may be one of the stronger risk factors for the development of both depression and dementia, in particular, uh, Alzheimer's dementia. And ultra processed foods may increase inflammation. So research indicates that may be one of the reasons why the correlation is present more strongly for depression than for anxiety, as well as for dementia in looking at people's consumption of ultra processed foods is because ultra processed foods may activate inflammatory pathways in the body that translates into higher risk for brain inflammation. Usually we would talk about dementia, depression, other mood disorders, and maybe end it there. But I do think it's so important to appreciate that one of the biggest drivers of brain dysfunction is vascular dysfunction. Now, throughout the body, cardiovascular disease is actually the top contributor to death. That is a big deal. Anything we can do to decrease risk of cardiovascular disease is a big deal. We usually think about this in the context of heart disease. So certainly heart attacks and other heart problems, but cardiovascular disease also encompasses risk of stroke. There was a recent meta-analysis. Uh, it looked at 63 million people. This was a review paper, and it found that a diet rich in processed foods was linked to a higher risk for cardiovascular events. And a paper that followed up in the Journal of Stroke found that when people ate more processed foods, it increased risk of stroke by 10%, while people who ate real foods, minimally processed foods, uh, foods like the Mediterranean diet, had a 13% decrease in their risk of having a stroke. So again, I really want to emphasize this. Cardiovascular diseases, which include stroke, are the top contributors to death in the world. 
it turns out that eating a healthy diet is actually a major important thing that we can do to decrease risk for cardiovascular disease. When we do that, it also translates into a decrease risk of brain issues by way of decreasing risk of stroke. So that is a very, very important reason why decreasing ultra processed food is an important part of a brain protective lifestyle. Now, to round this out just a little bit, I think it's important to look at both ends of the age spectrum. Stroke tends to be something that in, uh, impacts older people. On the younger age spectrum, it's important to understand that ultra-processed food may have a negative effect on children's behavior, on children's cognition, and on children's mood. When we look at these correlations, uh, I'll call your attention to a study that was published in the Journal of Affective Disorders, and they found that a diet that is rich in ultra-processed foods, specifically sugar uh, and saturated fat, increased risk for ADHD by 41%. And again, we're looking at younger people. A minimally processed diet rich in fruits and vegetables decreased risk by 35%. Fascinating research indicates that a mom's diet while she's pregnant may actually impact the child's risk for developing brain issues. These include cognitive issues and ADHD symptoms. The key takeaway from some of this research is that if a mom eats an ultra-processed diet that may decrease the child's brain function uh, by a number of metrics, while if a mom eats something closer to a Mediterranean pattern diet that may enhance a child's brain function across a number of metrics. So what do you do with all of this information? Again, I want to get to some uh, tangible information around this. It is one thing to simply say, don't eat more ultra processed foods or basically eat less of these foods, eat more real foods. I think that is true. It is also true to say that we have kind of found ourselves in a society in which ultra processed foods are the norm. As I mentioned, the majority of our calories come from these foods. That's not by accident. These foods are the foods that are most readily available. There are places around the country where it is really hard to find anything that isn't an ultra processed food. If you were to go into a gas station or many grocery stores, that's kind of all that is available. So it is, uh, I think, important for me to say that it's not necessarily easy to not eat ultra processed foods, but it is essential. So let's talk about some strategies to help you to decrease your reliance on ultra processed foods while bringing in foods that are linked to better brain health. The first point I would make here is the more you can control your food intake in terms of preparing your food, the better. It tends to be the case that if you go to a restaurant, they are going to add a lot to that meal in order to enhance palatability. It's not necessarily saying that restaurant food is ultra processed, but it does have a lot of the characteristics that make ultra processed foods less uh, healthy for the brain. Maybe a bigger issue is that if we're on the go, if we're not preparing our own meals, if we're not bringing food with us, we're more likely to rely on snacks, things that come from vending machines, grabbing a bite at the fast food restaurant on the way home, or just kind of uh, snagging whatever is available. So the more you can prepare your own meals and bring food with you, the better your chances are going to be at decreasing reliance on ultra processed foods. I think another really important point here to make is while there are many different perspectives on the optimal diet, meaning should I eat more meat? Should I eat more fruits and vegetables? Should I avoid nuts because maybe they have something that uh, I need to concern myself with? Should I avoid kale because maybe it has some anti-nutrients? By and large, what the research suggests is that if you're eating real foods, you are doing so much better than if you were eating the processed versions. So eating fresh fruits and vegetables, um, eating nuts and seeds. If you do choose to eat meat, eating real meat products as opposed to, well, I should say eating meat products that have been minimally processed. So instead of reaching for that um, salami stick, maybe you're reaching for uh, some basically cuts of meat that you know the source of and that you're preparing yourself. The bottom line here basically being the further it gets from something you could find in the wild at a farm, uh, the more likely it has been highly processed and the less the chances are that you can control for some of those variables that are linked to better or worse health. Some of the other things to consider here are that maybe the, the most concerning ultra processed food for brain health is actually sugar sweetened beverages. So the more you can kind of uh, account for your thirst account for your cravings by making available hydration. If you tend to get thirsty during the day, um, tea, coffee, instead of adding the sugar, try to do that without. Um, additionally, 
if you're going to be consuming a lot of beverages during the day, I think that if you're transitioning from drinking soda, uh, sparkling waters are still great. Look at sweet or unsweetened sparkling waters. There's some debate over artificial sweeteners. I think that there's a bit of a leaning towards stevia, allulose, monk fruit being perhaps the best of the non-traditional sweeteners. But what I would say in aggregate here or in kind of a general perspective is the more you can start to wean yourself off of sweetened beverages and sweet in general is the better. Um, some other considerations on the sweet front, one of the kind of top sources of hidden sweeteners in our diet, hidden sweeteners are kind of one of the characteristics of ultra processed foods are things like sauces and dressings. So the more you can kind of create those yourself or basically use your own ingredients instead of the store-bought salad dressings and sauces that tend to be pretty highly processed, the better. Um, another consideration would be to read labels. This is a great opportunity to find out whether that food is an ultra processed food or not. If there are ingredients in that food that you are not aware of, that would be something that you should consider as an ultra processed food. Uh, finally, I'll just say here as a, a, maybe the most important strategy of all is simply to have a plan for what you're going to eat. One of the ways in which we become reliant on ultra processed food is simply that we wind up not having enough time, uh, not having enough bandwidth to really think through the meals that we're going to eat. And therefore we wind up going through the uh, drive through restaurant or grabbing what's in the vending machine. So I know that it can be a challenging thing to have the bandwidth to do this, but the more you can plan your meals and bring snacks with you. So nuts are an amazing snack that I bring with me most places I go, uh, especially if you're traveling. That's a, a very common place for us to make poor dietary decisions. So as much as you can, bring real food with you when you go, make a plan ahead of time. That'll help you to fight off both the cravings for unhealthy ultra processed foods and also to keep your brain more generally in a state where you're able to make additional healthy decisions around what you eat. Okay, so again, this is a video, this is a conversation around ultra processed foods and brain health. If this was interesting to you, if you would like to learn more, make sure that you're subscribed. I'll be putting out tons more content on this subject. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to put them below and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.